correction. Hi everybody, I am Miranda Mikailas and recently I made a response to Contra Points on Twitter and um, I got dogpiled by a bunch of feminists and eventually other, you know, anti-feminists jumped in and basically me and my other anti-feminist friends, we kept getting called turf a lot. Apparently anybody who doesn't agree with intersectional feminism is a turf. So I decided to make a video explaining the difference between an anti-feminist and a turf. Though I mean Prince of Queens, Prince of Queens has a lot more experience with turfs. So I could just leave his Twitter in the description below because, I mean, I get all my information of TERFs from Prince of Queens and Frozen Binary because I've never spoken to a TERF before. But, you know, because <laughs> so many feminists called me a TERF, not just me, but other anti-feminists a TERF, I just, you know, decided to make a difference explaining the difference between those two since I do have like three or four feminists subscribed to me. So um, at first I'll just go over the different types of anti-feminists because um, there seems to be a conflation and I think it's because of the type of audience anti-feminist um, attract because anti-feminists do attract a wide range of audience. So I'm just going to go through the different categories. But these are really different groups. It is really, really different groups. And we all get pushed together. And it's annoying because I don't think, you know, sex negative feminists, sex positive feminists, you know, gender critical feminists and, you know, um, you know, um, anti feminists, you know, separ um, separatist feminists. I don't think all of you would want to be conflated with each other. You know, I'm pretty sure that, you know, the sex negative and the sex positive feminists would like us to not, you know, conflate the, you know, conflates us all. So, I mean, just be aware that there's different groups of us. Um, there's the MGTOW, and I hate the MGTOW. I really do not like the MGTOW. They're too extreme. And again, you know, not all MGTOW. You know, need to say not all MGTOW because there's kind of like, well, I'm a MGTOW, and I just believe that men and women don't have to get married, you know. Well, you know, there are the crazy MGTOW. And then there's the alt right, which, you know, fortunately, anti-feminists are speaking out against the alt rights now. You know, some black guy, Tyler Preston, um, some dumb American, you know, um, with sort of cause. There are people in the anti-feminist community beginning to speak out against the alts rights and letting people know that we don't like this and it would be nice if the feminist community were to speak out against Antifa. I mean, you know, you, you would want the anti-feminists to go against the alts rights. When will the feminist community decide to call out Antifa? I have no idea. Then there's the MRA. Um, then there's the free speech advocates. Then there's Republicans. There are 
a lot of Republicans in the anti-feminist community. Then there's egalitarian, and I view myself as an egalitarian. So there is like just different groups in the anti-feminist community. And I mentioned that because we all get conflated. Like there would be a person who leaves a comment that sounds like there are parts of MGTOW. There are like, I hate women, women should be slaves, and women are horrible, women should get raped. And they would leave it as a comment for Christiosity. Then Christiosity would post it on Twitter, something that's blatantly sexist. And it's like, well, it, it sounds like that's MGTOW, you know? Kind of like if there was a feminist that says, I'm a feminist and women should cover up and women shouldn't have sex because, you know, whenever a man has sex with a woman, it's right. I mean, that's sex negative feminism, you know. You all wouldn't want all that to be mixed together, you know. There's different branches and different categories, you know. And conversations would go better if, we just acknowledge that there's different categories of us all. And well, anyway, me and other anti-feminists were called TERFs. You know, this guy like BTPUBBS, he kept saying TERF, TERF, TERFs. When we're not TERFs, we're not even feminists, we're anti-feminists. And there, there's a big difference. The difference between an anti-feminist and a TERF is that we respect pronouns. Like when it comes to Blair White, we called her she, her, you know, we respect her pronouns. A TERF would call Blair White he, him, he, him, you know, you know, like Magdalene Burns. Magdalene Burns still refers to Blair White as a man, or it's kind of like when it comes to Micaiah B, when it comes to Micaiah B, I call Micaiah, you know, he, him, you know, you know, I do my best to always say he, him, when it comes to, um, Micaiah B, you know, shorts hair, wears men's clothing, say that they're trans, you know, they make the real efforts, you know, and for us, for the anti-feminists, it's all about putting efforts into it, you know. And that's why there are people who took issue with Milo Stewart. It's because Milo Stewart says that they're trans, but still wears women's clothing. Wears women's clothing, shops at the women's store, wears lipstick, you know, that's everything a woman does but says they're a man, doesn't experience gender dysphoria. And by the way, I hated all of the hate that Milo received because Milo is 17 years old. And it's kind of like, it's like more of an attack on Milo's appearance. And I don't see what it accomplishes. I don't. Like, it's just telling a 17-year-old kid to shrink bleach. And it's like, this kid is really, really young. And you're crossing the line. It's really, really crossing the line. And, you know, the kid received far too much hate. It's not an intellectual discussion. You know, you're just bullshitting yourself if you're going to call, calling a 17-year-old, you know, a 17-year-old to drink bleach. You're just kidding yourself if you're saying, oh, it's an intellectual discussion. We're just challenging this person's ideas. No, you are bullying and harassing a 17-year-old. And I could see why, you know, um... As Christiosity points it out, that um, anti-feminists make up only 5% of the male population and 7%, 7% of the 
of the population in total because I'm pretty sure that, you know, people just saw a bunch of 35-year-old men attacking a 17-year-old adults. What's wrong with you? Why are all of you middle-aged men telling a 17-year-old to drink bleach? You know, that's why, I mean, that's why, you know, I feel like there's the reason why anti-feminists make up 5% of the male population, 7% of the population total, because people, so many people just saw middle-aged men attacking a 17-year-old with very few subscribers, telling it, telling the kid to drink bleach. You know, there's nothing thought-provoking. You're not challenging the kid's ideas. You're not, you know, you're not really challenging the ideas. It's just hateful and malicious, you know, and this is where I agree with them. Armored skeptic, you know, it's just a 17 year old kid in their bedroom, and they're like, Oh, I believe in this, and I believe in that. And sure, you know, um, ideas need to be challenged, but I mean, there are people in their 30s saying the same thing, you know, there are articles saying the same thing. You know, one of the things that I like about Sarkin of Akkad is that at least he goes after an article saying the same thing. You know, instead of going just, as far as I know, Sargon has since gone after a teenager, you know. And no, I do not count David Sherratt as a teenager. He's legally an adult. Um, not only is David Sherrod's legal in adults, but he's like a compulsive liar. He just lies too much. There are compilation videos of all the lies he told. Like, I could leave you links in the descri description below of videos of all the lies he told. Even I made a video or two of all the lies he told. Like, it, he just lies way too much, you know, um, but anyway, the difference between anti-feminists and serfs is that we respect pronouns, you know, we respect, you know, Blair White's, you know, she, her, um, I respect, um, Mikhail be enough to go he, him, but it's kind of like when you say, I'm trans, but you still wear women's clothing, you know, we just believe that there should be efforts, and if you don't make any efforts, it's like, well, we don't really believe you're trans, because you're not putting any efforts, and you're not going through dysphoria, and this is where there's this contention lies, but from what um, Frozen Binary points it out, and I would show a clip. Frozen Binary points it out that there are many turfs that are trans. I'd be surprised to learn, in spite of the fact that most of their rhetoric, in fact almost all their rhetoric, consists of uh, hating men and portraying them as rapists, pedophiles, whatever they can use to, to hammer um, at their opponents, uh, they actually have white knights that will that will that will defend them, uh, you know, in, in hopes that they uh, they get their, their peepees touched or, or whatever. They're they're more than happy to whip themselves to please the uh, the women's of the group. It's really fucking sad. No no woman is attracted to that, especially not turfs, because some of them are actually trans themselves. I cannot believe it. Oh, you'd better the fucking believe it. Trust me, um, I've seen it. So these examples right here, uh, <laughs> they like to project their own insecurities on other people and blame us for their problems, um, such as uh, regretting their transition or it being a fetish for them, uh, specifically the fetish of, um, of fetishization of, wo of womanhood, autogynophilia as, it, as they call it, which is uh, 
really out of dated information um, and does not apply to most transsexuals. In fact, the, the majority of transsexuals, like overwhelmingly, aren't gyna autogynophilic. Um, they just want to be comfortable with the, pe the, the, the person that they are. And not only that, but Walt's hair. Walt's hair also um, is trans or transition and tra transferred back into a man. And what I've noticed from the lab, and particularly, is that they say after they, you know, after a person experiences regret, they say, well, you were never trans. You were never trans. You should have never gone through the surgery in the first place. And there seems to be a disconnect because you want, you want to make everything easier. You are the main ones trying to make things easier to go through the process. But then when a person, you know, experiences regrets and they begin to hate the trans community, like Walt's hair, or the people in Frozen Binaries videos, you're kind of a lot like, shit, tell us my train of thought. <laughs> um, yeah, this is one continuous shot, or at least I'll just, you know, add Frozen Binaries video in, but I'm not going to do too much editing. But anyway, you're the, you're, you're the type to go, um, Walt's hair was never trans. He shouldn't go do the surgery, but you're the main ones making it easier for people. You're the main ones who are like, oh yeah, like when you are 13 years old, you should be on hormone blockers. Oh, and I mean, you know, we, we should, you know, encourage people to think that they're trans or whatnot. It's like you're the ones who make it really, really easy for people. And then you, when people experience regrets, which I think that number is going to be on the rise, you're going to say, not real trans, never really trans, when really there's going to become a time when the number of regretters are going to outnumber the number of actual trans people. You know, there's going to be come a time where you're, there's just going to be too many people with regrets and fewer people who were actually, you know, trans. And who, I mean, who's going to have more weight? A cisgender, straight, white, female feminist or a person who has regrets being trans? People who actually went through the surgery and regretted it. You know, all of the people who had surgery and regretted it, they're, they are going to be the ones with the loudest voices because they are the ones who suffered from it. You know, to me, you don't wait until a person has regrets and go, not real trance, not real trance, not real trance. You know, you let people go to you. You let the child come to you and say, hey, I mean, I feel confused about my gender. Or you allow the kid to come to you. You don't go to the kid. You don't go, you're transgender, right? This is what it means, right? You, you like boyish activities, right? You allow the kid to come to you. You, uh, you go to, you know... You don't implant ideas into a kid's head. You let kids make the decision on their own. You know, um, you allow the kid to go, you know, I, I just feel weird. I feel strange. There's something going on. I feel confused. Let me just explore and try on women's clothing. Let me just test it out, you know. And, you know, you give them time to think. You don't just rush them into hormone blockers because people do grow out of it. Like 80% of trans children turn out cisgender. You know, like there are studies show, like even on the video clip, 
I know many of you hate Walt's hair, but I was even watching a documentary, and even a documentary said that that's 80% of trans children turn out to be cisgender. And to me, you're at, seeing like hormone blockers, you want this, you want this, you want all of this done at an early age. And then when somebody becomes like Walt's hair or the transgender serfs, you're like, well, you're not real trans, you're not real trans. You're waiting until they feel regret and say not real trans. You should have never been diagnosed. The doctor misdiagnosed you. You're waiting until after the surgery to say not real trans. We're going before the surgery, not real trans. You're wearing women's clothing. You're wearing lipstick. You're not real trans before the surgery because in the end, we also care about trans people. We're just thinking about the long-term consequences. Because if the number of regretters outnumber the number of actual trans people, in other words, if there is a really high number of misdiagnosed people, like if there's like 10% people, 10% of people being misdiagnosed as trans and then there's like you know 0.3 percent of people who are actually trans and they're really happy and satisfied for the surgery and you're gonna be like a cis white you know cisgender white intersectional feminist saying no no you're not real trans and i was trans your voice is going to be silenced by the 10 percent of people that experience sets change regrets. It would be better to be cautious about not misdiagnosis people and make sure that the people who go through with it are actually trans, then wait until Walt Taylor happens and all of the people in frozen binary video happens and goes, well, you're not real trans, and those people shouldn't have the surgery in the first place. You're waiting until it actually happened. You're waiting until they feel regret to say something. You're not trying to prevent it. You're actually helping get along. You're actually helping people getting misdiagnosed as trans, you know, by encouraging it and promoting misdiagnosis by making it so ridiculously easy. And then wait to think and then go, oh, well, you're not really trans, you know, you're, you're not really trans when they regret it, you know. And I just, when it comes to anti-feminists, we just, we just want to make sure that the people who get trans surgery are actually trans. That's the way we could put a limit to the people who feel regrets because there are people who are going to lie through it, cheat through it and whatnot. And that that is also why we just would rather look for a curve for it. Like S. Blair said to ContraPoints during their debates, it's like we want a curve for it to help trans people, kind of like we would want a curve for AIDS or a curve for HIV or a curve for cancer because if there is a curve then, then you, there is no reason to try to save up for a $60,000 surgery. The surgery isn't cheap so if we could have a curve for it then you know it's like a curve for AIDS or a curve for you know ADD or ADHD, you know, so that you can feel comfortable in your own skin. You don't have to worry about spending $60,000 for a surgery and then feeling sex change regrets and then going, well, I, I, I don't want this anymore. And anyway, um, if you, you know, disagree with me, you can leave me a comment telling me why you disagree. You could try to explain your points, you know, 
of why you disagree, but if you're just going to call me a turf, I mean, it's kind of a lot like, it reminds me of Undercover Brother, where the guy's like, you fired, and the guy's like, I don't even work for you, it's like, I'm fired, but I don't work for you, <laughs> you know, it's like, you're calling me a turf, it's like, I'm not even a feminist, you know, that doesn't even make any sense, you know, so, um, if you have anything else to say outside from I'm a turf, if you want to expand your thoughts, if you want to tell me why you disagree with me, I would read your comments. Um, anyway, um, and you know, I'm Remy Kylis. Like, comment, subscribe. Bye bye.